As the editor of ATV.com for the past 15 years or so, I've had a chance to ride some of the best trails anywhere. And one thing I've learned during that time is to never turn down a trip to Utah. So here we are in front of some of the most scenic trails you'll find anywhere on the planet. To prove the old adage true, if Utah don't got it, you don't need it. Over the next three days, we're going to be exploring three different trail systems, all from Tikaboo Lodge, which is our home base for this trip. Tikaboo is a full service outfitter. They've got lodging, food, a swimming pool, and most importantly, a lineup of awesome off-road machines. I'm going to get into as many of these as I can over the next three days, and I'll let you know which one I like best for this terrain. Our first stop on our Southern Utah off-road adventure was Cedar Point. The trail ride to get to Cedar Point was an adventure in itself as there was some unexpected snow on the ground. Snow on top of loose sand makes for a pretty great time in a UTV. Once you get to the top of the trail, you're met with some truly stunning views down into a 2,000 foot deep canyon with the Dirty Devil River below and imposing snow-capped mountains far beyond. Honestly, words can't do justice to what you see from up here. It just doesn't make sense how amazing it all looks. After coming back down the trail, we made our way to the Little Egypt geological area. What sets this place apart is the sandstone that's been sculpted by Mother Nature into some interesting shapes known as hoodoos. It made for a great way to end our first day. This is a relatively short trail, so you'll have plenty of time to explore and still get back in time for dinner at Tikaboo Lodge. Our next location is the Poison Springs Trail System. It is absolutely loaded with beautiful looking canyons and rock walls. We're doing about 75 miles through here today, so you're gonna pack a lunch, bring some water, and do not forget your camera. The trails in Poison Spring weave through vertical walls of red sandstone on either side, and it goes on for miles. If you look closely, you can find some petroglyphs carved into the wall that are as much as 2,000 years old. Not far off the trail, we took a short hike between two canyon walls where we were led to what is known as Cowboy Cave. This trek required a climb up the sandstone, but the result was well worth it. This hidden cave takes you back in time, and if you look up to the furthest wall, you'll find an ancient pictograph. This is one of the coolest things I've seen here in southern Utah so far. We've got the noted outlaw Butch Cassidy's inscription right on this red rock in the middle of Poison Springs. We've got another 30 miles or so of riding to, to check out this area, so let's get at it. While much of the trails on Poison Spring are desert sand, we found some rocky sections with considerable elevation changes. Chunks of sandstone from small pebbles to massive boulders line the trail here. Towards the end of our Poison Spring adventure, we had a chance to cross the Dirty Devil River. It was fairly deep and fast moving, but the Armax had no trouble dealing with it. For our third and final day riding in southern Utah, we retreated to a route known as the Taste of Tickaboo. This was a fairly long loop at around 65 miles, but it was absolutely loaded with some incredible things to see. It may seem like I'm repeating myself, but the backdrops around every corner were ridiculously beautiful. It doesn't even make sense how amazing this place looks. Early in the Taste of Tikaboo loop, we drove through a retired uranium mine, which is responsible for the community of Tikaboo even existing. One of the most memorable parts of this day occurred as we drove over an ancient seafloor. We stepped out of our vehicles and found a seemingly endless supply of fossils that were many millions of years old. We were also treated to some wide open desert plains, which were perfect for some spirited driving as the Henry Mountains provided an impressive backdrop. It's hard to overstate how fun it was kicking up some sand in this small corner of Utah. In a trip full of amazing views, pulling up to an overlook at Glen Canyon was yet another stunning vista. Looking down into the striking red walls of the canyon and the seemingly endless miles of beauty in all directions is enough to keep you wanting to come back again and again. We wrapped up the day by visiting a slot canyon known as the Tickaboo Narrows. Here we piloted our UTVs through a canyon so narrow you could touch the walls on either side of the vehicle. A truly spectacular way to wrap up our three-day journey through southern Utah. Over three days of off-roading, I had a chance to drive three different UTVs from the Tickaboo Lodge fleet. The Polaris Razor XP1000, Yamaha Wolverine 4 R Max, and Honda Talon 1000 X4. When it comes to exploring southern Utah, all three have their merits. The Talon had the most comfortable seats, the Wolverine offered a plush ride, and the Razor provided all-out sport performance. If pure fun is your goal, the Razor is hard to beat here. 
Its compact chassis is easy to turn around in tight quarters, and it's a treat to slide around a corner. This has been an incredible three days of riding. If you're gonna to come to Utah yourself, make sure you tread lightly and leave this place looking just like you found it. And if you're gonna be in Southern Utah, check out the folks at Tikaboo Lodge. They put on an amazing experience for off-roaders. Now guys, you've seen the footage, just look behind me. This is what Utah has to offer and we've barely scratched the surface. If you're an off-road lover, you need to be here.